becoming one and for becoming one the soul needs to surrender control and the soul needs to surrender its right to or what it thinks it has a right to um dictate dictate our lives because our soul has in a sense um protected us uh gave give us self-awareness and awareness of the world around us um but all that information has come from our experiences in life um mm -hmm. and therefore those experiences may be good those experiences may be bad so the soul may well be fractured damaged or affected have unmet needs unresolved issues that often drive it um to dictate what you do and the soul's need for love for acceptance can drive it for you know towards people to give it that um and the same with the soul's need for um i guess purpose can drive it into works um power finance all that stuff that gives the soul validation gives your identity in the sense uh from what you're doing and the soul's been used to doing that a lot of our lives and therefore when the spirit then becomes active seeking to operate from the inside out so giving us from uh from heaven from god from our identity in god and bringing back that knowledge of who we really are the soul often resists because the soul is tries to keep us safe but often the prisons the walls that the soul puts up are prisons that we get caught in um and so you get to you get to a point where god will lead you to the place where you trust him enough to let that control go and you put your trust in him and surrender rather than in yourself when that happens and god separates soul and spirit and reconnects them from the inside out rather than the outside in because the soul has lived independently of the spirit but has drawn from the life of the spirit because without the spirit you're not alive you know um you need you need the spirit soul body to have full life um and within us we have a sort of spiritual house if you like where this consciousness of the spirit has dwelt where god has dwelt within that area of first love in us but we may never have connected with with god in that uh, and then when we do you get this sort of wrestling process that goes on until the soul gets to the point where the soul realizes it does not have to give itself identity now the soul is made up of our personality our personality is made up of our redemptive gift the way god has wired us you know, and what we've learned from the world around us so some people can be quite introvert um, some people are quite extrovert some people are a mixture um people have different characteristics of the soul some of those can be formed connected to our redemptive gift which is good and some of them actually are the protection and coping mechanisms we've developed from the world so some people are quite reserved and introverted because they've been hurt and therefore they remain sort of hidden they're hiding themselves from other people because that's a safe place you know um, some people um were not given any attention as children or whatever they didn't feel recognized whatever and that can also sort of introvert people but actually often it turns it the other way around and they become very extrovert because they want to be noticed they want to be seen they want people to um see them and and can appreciate them and everything else so they can be driven that way so the soul has various characteristics that are um in essence not bad but if they're if they're in control then they are not good so the soul is there to function as part of spirit and body not to function independently um, and getting to know ourselves is what happens when we begin to engage with god within the soul 
recognizing how our conscience, our imagination, our reason, mind, emotions, will, choice, how they actually work, connected to the spirit. Because generally people have operated in the soul realm. So they may have a very strong conscience, depending on how they've been brought up. But that conscience can be shaped by not necessarily God, but by life. So if you were brought up in a family that went, you know, Christian family, went to church, had moral values, then you would probably have your conscience dictated to by those moral values. If you lived in a criminal family that saw nothing wrong in basically robbing and stealing and doing other things, then you might not have any conscience towards that at all because it can be determined by nurture, nurture rather than nature. Now, there's always inbuilt within the conscience something that has deeper values, but those things can be superimposed with other things that dominate them. And then you've got all the other functions of the soul, your imagination. Some people are very creative and imaginative because they've been encouraged and nurtured and that is how they're wired. Um, some people are very creative, but they've never been nurtured and that's suppressed in them. So you've got very complicated issues around the soul. The soul is not bad. And I think in a lot of Christian circles, the soul has been painted as the lesser and in a sense, I think because wrong interpretation of the Bible, like, you know, the heart is wicked and, you know, uh, and will never be tamed type of thing from Jeremiah. And actually the heart isn't wicked. The God has created us in a way that helps us be us. Um, it isn't wicked per se, but if we think it is, then we don't think the soul ever, soul almost needs to be controlled, you know, and, and suppressed when you become a christian if you're not a christian the soul is just there to be you know anything goes if you like anything that makes me feel good is good you know and you had a lot of that in the past do whatever makes you feel good doesn't really matter whether it hurts anybody else if it makes you feel good it's okay you know so there was very situational ethics around you know making yourself feel good and not so much thinking about other people because it became very selfish and self-centered but the more your spirit and god begins to engage the soul the more the soul begins to be challenged and healing comes to the soul because god wants to meet the needs that we don't have met in other ways so god wants to make us feel secure and accepted and loved and valued so we feel good about ourselves we can love ourselves because we're loved. But if you've never experienced that from God, you're going to have to try and find it somewhere else because there's a need to be loved. So then you people get into relationships to find love and they end up getting more damaged and more hurt because relationships often break down, particularly when you're young. Um, and therefore people get hurt and then put barriers up and then protect themselves and guard themselves against hurt. And you get all of these sort of, dynamics in which we live but as as god and your spirit begin to engage and you begin to choose because you, your soul can have experiences of god's love that encourage the soul to engage with god and then if for me i went through this process of allowing jesus to restore and heal my soul and i spent a lot of time um resting in him you know psalm 23 lying down in green pastures you know for him to restore my soul and i i began to to do much of that meditation and allowing him to do it eventually it came to the point where my soul needed separating and reintegrating he took me through that process when it was separated and reintegrated then my soul and spirit could function in a oneness but also be separated but quantumly entangled so my spirit can be in heaven where it was designed to be my soul can be here but they're connected instantly connected both two-way communication i can also travel consciously to where my spirit is and my spirit can engage where my soul is so there's this interactive relationship 
between the physical and spiritual realm, between the soul and spirit and body, which was how it was designed to be. And I got to the point of surrendering, the need to validate myself, to my identity coming from what I was doing, and then I was able to stay in that realm. Because before, my spirit and soul were connected, but very closely connected. So every time I went into heaven, I would come out of heaven. So I'd go in spirit and soul, come out spirit and soul, go in spirit and soul, come out spirit and soul. From the point of separation and reintegration with a totally different connection, my spirit could be there, I'm here, and everything can flow from there to here. And I can choose to engage that realm consciously, cognitively, whenever I want to. Um, but my spirit is seated in heavenly places, functioning in heavenly places. And that is why, you know, information and revelation and truth can come from that realm instantly into my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I ask, answer questions, I don't have to think about the answers. You don't sit there thinking, oh, I wonder what I should say. Sometimes I think I have no idea what the answer is to this. But I just trust that God and my spirit will have had something to be able to share into that situation. And sometimes I might say, look, this might just be my opinion. Um, but often I know it's coming from the heart of God. And therefore I trust you know, not having to think about what I'm going to say before I say it. Um, and often I say things that I actually think I don't really know what that is, how I've shared that is different from what I thought before. And I realize that dwelling in both realms means my heart can be connected to God, cardiogenosis knowledge. So infused knowledge of his heart can then connect to me and I can know uh, and do things that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do otherwise. So before I had to go in, get the knowledge, come out and apply the knowledge. Now I'm there. It's, it's a constant flow in multiple things because I'm in multiple places. So the soul of spirit is not limited to one place at one time. Therefore, you can be functioning very differently in that spirit realm than generally you do on in this realm because the body is often limited now there are stories of by by location where people are seen in two places at once um, um and some of that can be angelic in that your angel can represent you in one place sometimes it could be that you're in two places at once but I, I can't say it's ever happened to me that i've been consciously aware of now, I ha have been functioning in heavenly realms and people have said that they've seen me talk to me, had conversations with me in that realm. Um, and, I'm, you know, I don't doubt that because I'm asleep generally or, or doing something else and focusing on something else. So mm -hmm. I don't have to be always aware of what I'm doing to benefit from it because it's me. You know, I, I'm not separate Although I can be in two different sort of realms, I'm not separate. I'm still one, still whole. And the healing and the wholeness that comes brings you to a place of oneness and union with God. Because you can't really be in union with Father, Son and Spirit any more than you're in union, spirit, soul and body. That's why a lot of people struggle with their relationship with God because they're still broken in their soul. And the spirit wants to bring the revelation of who you were before you came here to you so that you'll know your true identity from the origin that birthed you in God. Um, and the spirit is the able to reveal that and to bring you into a deeper place of identity because your identity truly is who God says you are, not who you might think you are or other people might think you are who or the world has made you so there's often a process of renewing of the mind that brings us into a place where we truly accept who we really are and then we operate from that you know having the wisdom of the things we've learned in this realm because you can't just forget everything you know in this realm otherwise you wouldn't be able to function here so you have the wisdom of your memory 
but not the trauma of your memory. So God can heal you and restore you and make you whole, but retains wisdom, but loses negativity from the past. There are things that have happened to me in the past that I don't remember anymore. I have no desire to remember them. I have a inkling of things that happened to me, but I don't have any detail anymore because those things are removed. Um, and the effects of them no longer has a play on my life. So ultimately, you know, God wants us to operate spirit, soul, body in union, operate in heaven and on earth and anywhere else we might be able to go and engage and live in that place of union. But spirit, soul and body are to be valued equally, not one seen as lesser than the other, because God didn't make us hierarchical he made us to be whole like he's whole you know father son and spirit are not hierarchical they're relational and if our spirit and soul body is in full relationship and union with one another then our relationship with god can actually take on a whole different perspective and most people aren't there because no one's ever told them that or taught them that or they've never gone through the process because they're still wrestling spirit and soul you know, uh, and when you encounter God and he starts to show you his love, then that gives you the foundation to trust him. You know, why would you trust someone you've never met? Why would you trust someone you've never experienced? And that's what we've asked a lot of people to do in Christianity. Believe in God. Well, who is he? Well, just believe in him. You know, have faith. Well, God never intended us to live by faith in our relationship with him live by faith in the way we live and create things around us but not in our relationship with him that is supposed to be knowledge of the heart not faith and and a lot of christians are trying to live by faith having no expectation that they're ever going to meet god until they die so they live a much lesser kind of life and their spirit and soul are always in tension because they've now come to trust God at a relational level that enabled them to open up their lives and allow him in, you know, and he wants to fill us and he wants to be in one union with us in that oneness of spirit, soul, body and father, son, spirit. But a lot of people haven't experienced that. So they're still operating in much less than what they were designed to. Um, and without the sort of mystical experiential part of our relationship with God, then you're only going to go on what the Bible says or what you heard someone else say. You don't have any first-hand personal experience, which is what is the, our testimony that we can live from rather than someone else's testimony or someone else's sermon or someone else's theological position about what the Bible says. You know, and if you go by what the Bible says or what people say the Bible say, then you'll be waiting to go to heaven to experience everything that God designed you to experience now. You know, which is why God is revealing himself in much more intimate and personal experiential ways so that we actually get to know that he loves us unconditionally. And then we can choose to let go of our need to protect ourselves and cope with life because we trust in our relationship with him and then spirit soul body begin to work as they were designed to work rather than in sort of the independence in which they've ended up because we followed the wrong path you can desire the separation and reintegration of soul and spirit you can desire the separation of your thoughts and intentions so that you know what is motivating you see the thoughts and intentions of the heart are they independent from God or are they motivated and directed from our relationship with God? And there's often a mixture. So sometimes we may be directed by God and sometimes we may be directed by the soul. And again, that needs separating out so that actually when functioning properly, the thoughts and intentions of our heart are all directed from the inside out, not the outside in or not from the experiences that we have memory of in life yeah so yeah it's a process and i would not try and separate my soul and spirit because all i'm doing is reaffirming my soul's power 
to try and do it it won't ever work you know you'll you'll never separate your own soul and spirit because you don't have the ability to do it you might think you can but really that just reinforces your soul's independence i must trust in god to separate my soul and spirit and reintegrate me correctly you know otherwise i'm just operating from the power of the soul and many people do have very powerful souls and they can use that in life to get ahead and do things and but it's not necessarily god's intention and usually it's driving us along a path that god didn't intend you know then people get a relationship with god and find oh i need a complete career change i need to change direction in my life because this just doesn't feel right anymore because they have driven their life, usually driven by the unmet needs they have, you know, um, which can be quite powerful. Unmet needs are a very powerful force that drives us into things in life rather than being led by the spirit. It never says that the spirit drives us. It says those who are led by the spirit are sons of God. Therefore, the spirit is leading us to follow. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to get behind you and, and drive you forward. He said, follow me. So we just have to follow and God will work that out. But if you know about it, you can certainly seek God and say, can you do this in my life? Yeah, but then you've got to go through the process that will bring you to the point where he truly can. Because saying he can is very different from actually it happening you know i would have thought in my journey i would have thought yes i want god to separate my soul and spirit i want that but when it came to it it was a very different experience when it really boiled down to it i had to get to the point where my soul truly surrendered and gave up for it to happen but when it did everything changed quite dramatically um, because it really brought me into a place of being able to be uh, operating in heaven and earth and functioning in that place and being seated there and operating here and flowing you know I mean, if i went back 12 years and tried to answer questions the way i get them now i probably would have struggled to answer the questions in a way which i think god intended because I would have not had that flowing connection. I would have only been able to answer the question out of the memory of my experience, which is very different. Even if it was a good experience, it's still not the same as having a heart to heart connection with God, which allowed his heart to motivate and, and engage me, help me um, to flow from his heart. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.